Hello, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening from Beijing. And I'd like to say good afternoon from Europe. And good early morning from American side. Dear viewers, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This episode is called China Insiders Are On Live, episode two. And in this topic, we're going to talk about everything you need to know about the coronavirus stress, anxiety, and depression. So the coronavirus has upended countless lives around the world, and we're all become too familiar with new terms such as shelter in place, flatten the curve, social distancing, and etc. We can see from the financial market, the stock market has been bouncing and surging wildly like never before. Just this week, we saw the greatest number of the unemployment application worldwide. And there are still no toilet paper at any grocery store in some countries. If you can even go to the grocery store in some part of the world, which is even more ridiculous. Are you feeling stressed, anxious, and also in the big depression mode? This is because you're trying to telework or your neighbors are making noises in the next room or somebody are asking you to do him a favor to do babysitting or your neighbor is kindly knocking on your door to ask you to kindly do a favor to walk his dog. So many things are changed unprecedentedly in our lives. It is a critical moment to be in this situation. And it has been a challenging time for all of us. We can partially move around here in China, but people from different parts of the world are still sheltered at home. But also we need to find a solution and new ways to cope with this situation. And that is the purpose of this episode, especially our mental well-being status. So welcome to the China Insiders on Life, episode two, speaking of psychology. We aim to explore how we can moderate ourselves better psychologically, mentally, and even physically by being prepared for the future challenges impact by the COVID-19. I'm your host, Chen. I'm moderating this debate channel. And joining me today are Eva, Ada, and Orla, three China veteran and experienced insiders. They distinguish themselves as cultural bridge between China and the rest of the world. And more importantly, some of them are also practicing psychologists. And we're not professional psychologists, but we're aiming to provide what we know and our insights on how to help you to guide you through this darkness of our online time. And have been telling stories of the therapists and constantly as journalists of the three insiders. They also cover the coronavirus pandemic here in China and in their own country. So welcome to our program and let's take it away to today's topic. All right, so dear insiders, there we go. Hello. Good to see all of you. Hello. Hello. Hello, Hello everyone. Nice to see you again. Hello. It was a pleasure. Nice it was a great pleasure. So our insiders, because of your journalism background, some of you guys has been nonstop speaking to people around the world in the past months to try to represent the information to help them and the readers to cope with the strange times in this pandemic. So I have a question for three of you, actually. Uh, what is your opinion in your countries? What are the most frequently asked questions of the people in your country regarding stress, anxiety, and depression? And what kind of situation you've been seeing has significantly changed the situation? So let's start with Orga, please. Yes, hello uh, again. Um, let me think about this, uh, about my country, because the situation the situation was changing all the time. And I was talking uh, basically with all of my people, with my friends, uh, and especially I was talking with my family. At the beginning, when coronavirus did appear in my country, uh, people were not having... Uh, uh, masks uh, enough 
in uh, in the store, in the drugstore, in different uh, places, they couldn't buy masks, and um, they were asking what to do, how how to prevent themselves, and uh, what to do with the masks. And basically, uh, some of people were doing masks by themselves, and my mom. Also, she was even giving me some advices how to do masks because uh, we were having it from still Soviet Union experience uh, that we can do all of those primitive um, uh, masks uh, by ourselves. And my mom was telling me that she was doing this and uh, uh, she was using all of the things what is possible to use and then, and then she was doing for herself at the beginning. Then uh, another one story, it was like uh, some people even didn't believe uh, if it's uh, happened or not happened. And uh, at the beginning, some of um, our students, uh, people who were coming back from China, back to Belarus, they were saying that even they, uh, because of Chinese experience, they were active to go and to make uh, coronavirus tests um, either to understand if they're having virus during the flight, uh, they, if, if they did bring virus from China. And uh, they were saying that it was not a lot of attention at the beginning of even them. They were going to make a test by themselves. Nobody was asking them to make a test uh, and uh, to prep, like, to make a situation clear. Uh, some another situation, my friend was telling me that uh, she was very, very worried and she was basically became even not just only stressed, but she was really basically anxious and, and almost going to depression. And she was all the time saying, oh, I am afraid how to go uh, to work, how what I have to do. Because, you know, in my country, it was no official, um, quarantine and uh, officially uh, president of the country at the beginning was not saying that uh, uh, this virus is something very serious and uh, he was saying that it's probably uh, some psychosis and and uh, some some like a lot of over information about this so then slowly situation started to be getting worse in my country uh, in terms of coronavirus spreading. And then um, Ministry of Health uh, and some other organizations start to understand and start to divide people. But still, it was for, during all of the time, it was no quarantine, uh, the same like in Sweden, in Belarus. But I suppose that in Sweden, it's a little bit different situation. So my friend from my friend and my ex colleague, she was saying to me, people, seems they don't understand the ser serio seriousity of uh, this question, and they are not wearing masks, they are not they didn't care and some people i know the stories that some people even were sick and they were continue to go and working as a hairstylist or as a, as a manicure or something working in salon and and even th they were already basically uh, spreading um, virus but they didn't they, they didn't go to quarantine because uh, they were afraid to lose their job or something like this so basically, it was a lot of different uh, questions and a lot of anxiety and uh, stress. And even some of people, they were getting depressed and so some of the people were making quarantine by themselves. It was like alternative. Uh, if you are getting children to go to the school and all of the parents uh, who was reading the news, who was understanding the situation, they basically said, no, my children will be not going to, to the school. And uh, for example, in my family, uh, we are having uh, my nephew and my nephew was all of this time, as soon as a uh, virus did appear, he was not going to the kindergarten. So he was basically staying at home. That, that was the position of my family. Wow, wow, thank you for the insight, Olga. It seems like a very uh, dramatic and significant uh, situation in Belarus because of the unlockdown situation. So uh, I want to uh, get some information from our Greek friend, uh, Eva. Uh, how was the situation and how was your observation of people's anxiety or stress or let's say depression back in Greece? 
Uh, hello everyone again. Well, about Greece, the situation was a little bit different. Uh, people since the very beginning got uh, informed about uh, the situation and um, the Greek Ministry of Health started to give everyday um, communications through uh, uh, press releases and uh, press conference. Uh, where um, our uh, head expert started to explain to people what they should do and uh, what are the news from uh, the World Health Organization and what they should do. So uh, we cannot say that uh, there was a lack of information. Uh, there was a lot of information, but still people uh, had difficulty in uh, the first uh, two months to realize how they should organize this uh, new normal, let's say. So even though they went in a certain point for uh, some period of time into uh, some kind of quarantine, uh, they still uh, uh, weren't sure either to wear the mask or not wear the mask. Is it good to wear it or not? There was a stress around uh, the mask situation a lot because there was uh, uh, lots of uh, information about against the masks. Uh, instead, um, in a certain point, people uh, realize how useful they are, so they stop thinking about it. But still, uh, the stress is connected to the jobs because um, Greece is a, a highly touristic country, and uh, of course, coronavirus has influenced a lot uh, jobs of uh, many, many people. And also, there is uh, another second stress apart. Uh, uh, the working situation and other stress is about children, uh, how they are going to be influenced uh, for uh, these changes they see in their lives, uh, right. what kind of uh, um, social impact they are going to have because uh, they have to stay at home. Uh, this, of course, influences also the parents' life because they cannot uh, go out, they have to stay there uh, mm -hmm. to support their kids. So there is an extra stress about this. And uh, another, uh, the third uh, stressful situation, I would say, is uh, thinking about the future, when this thing is going to finish. So there is this stress about when uh, the vaccine is going to come, uh, if there are going to be enough medicine, uh, what is going to happen about uh, uh, the next uh, year, let's say. So these three are the most important things that uh, influence people right now. Very interesting, very interesting, very thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Eva. Uh, and then let's hear from uh, Eva's uh, Turkish neighbor, Ada. <laughs> what, how was the situation back in Turkey? And are the Turkish people, let's say, worried or anxious about it? After I listening to my friends Olga and Eva, I see that more or less in many countries the situation uh, is the same. Uh, I mean, uh, what makes people stressed and what kind of problems uh, in the countries? I mean, almost they are uh, same things. Uh, in the beginning, actually, when it was the virus was not in Turkey, uh, yeah, officially it it announced in China, so they were more panicked than us that time. You know, <laughs> they were always calling me and asking me about my health, my mental health, if I get the virus or not. Uh, so they were more panicked, they were more afraid than us. But later, after a few months, uh, the first case appeared in Turkey too. And in that time, people uh, actually they had enough information. So, uh, also our health minister was uh, relating the latest, the most, uh, the updated numbers about the virus uh, and other informations uh, daily. So on a daily basis, so people could get uh, the information. Uh, but uh, you, uh, but you know uh, that time there were, there was a kind of panic like in the markets. And, uh, you, you know, people, they were afraid, like, uh, we will have no food and uh, everything will be finished. So they were going to markets a lot. So and also in the beginning in Turkey, they said, like, uh, the people who are older than 65 years and younger than 20 years, some of the days in a week, they couldn't go out. And I remember a case, uh, it happens uh, something in Turkey, like one day, it, it was Friday evening, uh, suddenly the 
they announced that uh, during the weekend uh, people cannot go out so people got panicked suddenly and they went to the bakeries to buy uh, breads you know and i think it, in that time a lot of people were out so i think uh, the virus spread a lot that time so uh, the the uh, actually in brief uh, is now uh, and even that time and now more people they don't they are not aware of the the seriousness of the situation some people still reject to wear mask and uh, some people like they act like they have there's no pandemic <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and they keep their uh, usual routine and uh, but there are some people on the other hand uh, they're afraid and also everybody now they wonder what will be in the future what we will see when the vaccine will come and you know everybody's uh, worried about this and also there's another issue like in greece uh, some people they lost their jobs uh, uh, so they are also uh, they are worried about their economic situation. So uh, these kind of problems uh, we have. But now uh, I think people are getting used to it to live with the virus. That's what right. I see. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Ed. Great insights. So we can see from country to country, every country have different approaches, or I would say different dimensions of the attitudes toward this virus. For example, some countries like Belarus, like Sweden, they have no lockdown at all. And some countries like China or let's say South Korea, Thailand, they're extremely cautious and prevented about this issue. And some countries, I don't even want to say names, uh, they have no clue what was going on. And in these terms, we have to mention one country who has reached a great and the grim milestone of the coronavirus. It has taken over one quarter of the entire worldwide coronavirus confirmed cases and more than 160,000 people have now died because of the coronavirus and the number is still rising rapidly and this country is the United States so as a Chinese I feel very sad about this situation because for me I have a lot of American friends and also Chinese uh, friend of mine are studying or working in America so geopolitically Many Americans are now turning to China or even Chinese people, I would say even Asian Americans in America, to blame or even attack. They think we're the source of the virus and we bring these diseases to other human beings. So they're treating us towards a very hatred uh, attitude. And it's obvious that the bias and the prejudice are helping them to make these rough decisions. And I would say those informations, either from the let's say, radical left side of the party or the liberal right side of the party, but they're from the media. So it seems like there is overwhelmingly media information overload on average citizens, not only in America, but all around the world. So I want to address the question to three of you. What does the information overload to do with people's stress levels? Or let's say, what the information overload and people can do something how they can cope with the situation and get the right information to control and balance the level of their own anxiety and stress. Anybody want to share some in, in, information or insights about this regard? Yeah, I can start if you want. <laughs> Sure, definitely, Ada. Go ahead. Uh, okay, uh, so here is the thing. Uh, in our first episode, I talked about it a little bit, like uh, the problems, the anxiety I had in the beginning. Uh, you know, uh, before, I mean, I had uh, a problem. Uh, I had panic attack. So that's why, uh, you know, these kind of things like viruses, pandemics, and, you know, every, these kind of things, they are all a threat to those people who have panic attack. So, uh, like, you can, you wait in an, in, how to say, you always wait, oh, the virus will come from somewhere and you will get sick and you will die. So, this idea, this um, mindset uh, is not good for us. And, you know, uh, what increases our stress is also the information online, especially on social media. Uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, false or fake information uh, but now i think uh, it's uh, the real things the real information is more you can reach uh, now also during this time so it's better to uh, check the 
authorities, uh, the uh, like some government pages to get the information, some official pages, and also uh, reading less news, maybe uh, it can help. Uh, it helps a lot, actually, uh, because it worked with me. Uh, I came over my anxiety uh, by reading less news and doing more stuff uh, at home, uh, like uh, keep trying to keep my routine, uh, trying to uh, eat good food, healthy food, and also sleeping good. Uh, and also I was doing some exercises at home. Uh, you know, it helps a lot. Uh, everybody says exercise is the best thing uh, to, to change your mood, uh, to get some energy. Uh, and you know, also I want to share with everybody, like uh, everybody, my another solution. You know, you you should you should deal with art. <laughs> uh, you you like you know you can start doing something you never did before, like painting, or you can try to write poem. You know, uh, during this pandemic. So like Shakespeare uh, mm -hmm. and also Newton, you know, uh, you know, the story about apple tree about mm -hmm. Newton, like he realized the gravity uh, when he, the apple fall, fell down on his head. But, but actually, you know, uh, it was during the pandemic time, uh, he was at home and watching the tree, you know, right. so at that time right. it, it inspired him. So, so these kind of things, like uh, they cope with this by um dealing with art so people can do this kind of stuff i am not telling people to become a professional but you know to get in some hobbies these kind of uh things they can do too interesting very interesting i mean i think it's a time for everybody to to do something new i mean to learn a new instrument or learn how to paint or yeah. go to some online exhibition stuff like that that, that can be a very a uh, contributive uh, uh, collaboration and I think a good balance that people can seek for. Uh, Eva, I know you're uh, very much into uh, cultural events and the art promotion and uh, cultural exchanges between not only China and Greece, but also uh, Greece with some other countries. What's your opinion on this? Bill? Well, I totally agree with uh, Eda because um, in this situation of stress, we must find um, the inspiration we must uh, see this difficulty as an opportunity uh, to see new things so as you ask me now about the art and culture events i think uh, uh, the art industry like the tourism industry they were hit very very badly with coronavirus but still we can see people that uh, managed to find inspirations in everything so i really admire these persons that can uh, see the difficulty and say okay let's see what kind of opportunity we have now so you see these artists especially musicians but also uh, actors and people who work in uh, different performances uh, dance uh, music or theater and you can find online a huge amount of uh, links where you can see theatrical performances, you can see musical performances. You see these people act in this situation in a very, very inspiring and creative way. So I think that for everyone, this uh, um, quarantine, this period with uh, coronavirus can be um, opening our mind to other possibilities we have. So we shouldn't give up, we should uh, stay calm and uh, look through the difficulty to see what else we can do. Exactly. I mean, I've, I'm a musician myself, so I've been all, all the time speaking with my uh, musician friends around the world. I think this kind of the pandemic situation also uh, exposed uh, themselves to uh, have the more uh, understanding and have more time to diagnose what they can produce music wise or i'll say art artistic wise to the world so i think it actually generates more uh i'll say worldwide uh, inspiration it, it i mean this i don't want to say thanks to the pandemic but due to the pandemic it inspired a lot of artists to have the possibility to create more i'll say masterpieces yeah so it actually helps a lot. And I think by this regard, I have a, a very interesting, another uh, a topic to talk with you. It's like some of us, you know, 
here in China, we don't have to quarantine ourselves anymore, thanks to the uh, overall control of the situation. But some of the people around the, the world, in some other part of the world, they're still in quarantine. Maybe because that, you know, in China's situation is better. But I mean, on some other places, I would say, especially for the people who didn't realize that they're sick enough to be in the hospital, they're still running around the streets. So I mean, this whole the general situation of the pandemic are still going very bad in some other part of the world. And these are people who are probably experienced, you know, the difficult, difficult feelings around the world. So, and in this aspect, some of the psychologists are around the world are thinking, and also people are discussing about what is the impact of the quarantine can change people's mind or can change people's behavior. So what are you guys thinking about this regard? Let's start with Orga. Orga, what do you think about the impact of the uh, pandemic uh, quarantine session? Uh, first of all, I would like to say that um, probably everybody, so I can agree with a lot of things uh, with everybody what we were talking before, but we actually didn't concentrate it about your question um, about how to understand which information is fake, which is information is uh, real and so on. But um, answer to your now question, I would like to say uh, that the impact of this um, pandemic uh, is, first of all, people were understanding that they can do a lot of things. And first of all, they are work from home. And it's a lot of people were actually, in this case, very happy to stay at home, to spend more time with their family, uh, to spend the time uh, with their children, with themselves, who is not having uh, anyone next to them, and to be concentrated a little bit about work, but from another point of view. So we basically, we don't spend a lot of time with people who, who are quarantined and who are still not working from the office, or uh, who are not going to the factories and, and uh, so on. Because, of course, there is a segment of people who must be going to the work. And they, I can understand that they were really, really, really worried. And uh, they were in a huge stress. But most of the people didn't understand that they actually can do work from home. Even uh, the media people, they were talking, they were making the meetings, they were making their programs, they were making anything what is considered work. And even they could not uh, dress themselves officially all the time. I mean, like they could dress uh, up, but they didn't dress uh, down. For example, it's a lot of bosses. It's a lot of people were saying that they were even not wearing their trousers and, and making this meeting, you know. It's also very funny things, but people were doing this because they were feeling very comfortable at home in this case. Some people are saying, uh, and me, for example, I was feeling this, that um, I was having more time and I was having suddenly time to sleep, to rest, to basically to understand myself, to make my family working. And you know, like, but it's also the, this paradox. Uh, it's also some of people, and especially in China, it's also, we have to say that they were not prepared to spend all of this time family together. And in China, yeah. it was a unique situation that it's a lot of divorce happened exactly after uh, after pandemic, after quarantine time, which in many is many countries. <laughs> no, <laughs> but in China it was the first, yeah. the first like noticed. You know that they were saying like, "Oh my God, there is a lot of divorce." Like yeah. people understand that actually they did right. They did choose their partners not right. They cannot spend time <laughs> together. They cannot. They cannot talk. They cannot. I don't know. Because usually, like, people didn't see each other so, so far. And it was also, I think, that this is time also to clean, in a way, your space, your mind, your uh, situation with work and yourself. Because you can, you can really uh, go down and look deep in yourself and to understand what you really want and what you really can. Some people were taking this advantage as to 
study something unusual. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, in my family, also it's happened. Like, uh, my husband, for example, he did he started to study something what he before didn't didn't pay attention to. Right. So and basically, basically people are getting some in other um, work preferences, and uh, it was a very big boom for internet uh, connected work, programming, different game things, uh, uh, making and virtual things, artificial intellect, and so on. So basically, um, this was also time when you can uh, uh, see in other possibilities, uh, as I would like to say. Interesting, interesting. Is the, I have it. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I, go I, 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 read, I read something very interesting thing about this, what this uh, stress makes people like. You know, now there are some research. Uh, there is a situation called now pseudo corona i'm not sure about the pronunciation but that means fake corona like mm -hmm. people actually they don't have the virus but they have the symptoms some of them or they feel like they got the virus and um, they go to doctors they get panic and they do tests and according to the studies i think they made studies about, about this in england canada and egypt so uh, they were saying uh, most of the people, 70% of the people, they don't have the virus because of anxiety. Uh, their body uh, reacted, you know, like maybe the temperature rise or they started coughing or not feeling well, you know, this kind of thing is very interesting. The asymptomatic. Or I would say the fake corona. No, no, this is not asymptomatic. They don't have virus at Nothing all. Nothing at all. Right? Nothing. Uh, Just because yes, of anxiety. Yeah, this is yeah. a result of anxiety, yes. It's more like, how, uh, how to say, mental or psychological impact. Yes, exactly, exactly. It has done something uh, negatively on humans' body. So, I mean, and of course, I think there's a lot of applications out there that allow us to reach out to our friends or like family members. So, I would say even to the experts or the therapy exactly. uh, providers online via, let's say, Zoom, Skype, or uh, FaceTime meetings, etc., and it's very easy. Uh, it's becoming easier to connect with people in this pandemic. And but now you have to make a little more effort to connect to your sponsor in a different way because you know because once you create a pattern, right, to create a, a habit of doing things, and this kind of the habit can be uh, useful for any connection with the people in other lives. So I would say, really, this uh, uh, this high technology has also helped. To connect people during the pandemic or let's say add it up some uh, positivities or even uh, add some fun to our lives so i mean uh, so that address to my next uh, uh, a little question so people are stressed we can see during the pandemic uh, during the pandemic people are freaking out people are anxious uh, uh, over the wild situation and uh, i would like to say that there is a new term of uh, communication of uh, uh, asking for consultancy, which is the telepsychology. Have you ever heard of this term, telepsychology? Uh, because this is like uh, in the past, the people would like to seek for uh, help or consultant advices, professional advices from a psychologist or from uh, uh, an expert in general, face to face. But now, due to this limitation, they're seeking for this tele. Uh, psychology. Anybody who is uh, familiar with this, or I mean, I heard Ada has done it in China. So, could you explain <laughs> how how is this online consultancy works, and uh, you think they have any limitations, or it's uh, what is the pros and cons about it? Yeah, I had an experience about this, but mine is not because of virus. I had panic attack. That's why I started long before this pandemic. And uh, because I wanted to talk in my mother tongue, that's why I found someone from Turkey. So uh, we were using Skype to uh, do our sessions. And uh, let me say you, if you have a very serious problem, online consulting is not a good way because uh, even for me, I mean, my situation was not that severe. So uh, my, my doctor said, yeah, we can do it online. So sometimes, you know, it was, 
the connection was not good so in those times you know you don't feel well but uh, you have to have a good connection for this and also you know actually uh, when i talked to my doctor uh, they said uh, he said like in the beginning he was worried too because he didn't try this online consulting before uh, so he wanted to try with me and we tried and he saw that yeah he can understand uh, he can read my uh, expressions you know he can uh, comment i have to say he can uh have to say evaluate uh, what i do what i say so everything is like almost the same uh, when you go to the doctor's office uh but uh, let me say again if you have a serious problem you shouldn't uh, you cannot do online consulting be because it will not work and also my doctor said with the pandemic now <laughs> he is working online with many of the patients mm -hmm uh but not with the severe ones so it can help in a way but you know sometimes you don't have the economic situation to get the online consulting uh, but uh, in that case in many countries i mean most of the countries as i know uh, for example in turkey uh, in the big cities they have some hotlines like uh, free hotlines you call them and you get some help some support uh, also i have i i know that in us also they have uh, in china in the beginning i now i think they still have it was possible here too to to get online support so it's a good way actually uh, and there is another way except this online consulting maybe people can help you about this uh, some people they do it um have to say f for free to help people uh, some experts are like working like this so you can try to find these kind of people mm -hmm. yeah mm. very interesting and actually i think to have a virus doesn't necessarily means that we can ignore the mental concerns uh, which actually existing before for example the depressions of this uh, uh, skin uh, prania or the post traumatic uh, stress disorder who significantly need cares for these issues for example people already had diabetics or like let's say heart attack issues problems but added on by the pandemic by the coronavirus uh, uh, mental impacts is becoming more severe for these people who are feeling increased amount of the stress or distress because of the uh, because of the world that we're currently living in is full of an uncertainty and related to the virus so uh, how do you guys think about how severe would you think the new stress will be having an impact on the people who already have some mental or I would say physical diseases before? I would like to say that um, probably we all have to change um, our point of view according to psychology and according to uh, working with ourselves. Because uh, exactly during the pandemic, uh, during the pandemic, we did understand that stress uh, is the same thing for everyone. Less or more, uh, it's never mind. But the mind is, uh, the matter is that uh, stress is uh, and anxiety is really uh, affected us, all of us. So what we can do, we have to find a solution. And I think that exactly this uh, psychological um, talking and telepsychology as you are calling this uh, it helps a lot and a lot of people like in in my opinion and in my experience also a lot of my friends they were looking for it and me too i am not excluding of this situation because uh, i was not that afraid because i was having uh, somebody next to me my friends and and my uh, husband and it's very funny that i start to talk every day with my family i was talking very often with my family back home but then i start to talk more often like i made it every day basically like if i'm living there with them and i became a psychologist for my mom as well because i was always talking about what she is doing because she is uh, taking care of the baby all the time and she's alone sitting at home because everybody were going to work and so i start to provide some advices for her because those advices which i did learn already what i did uh, read about and what i did prove already also so 
And I think that this is very important uh, thing, what did happen during the pandemic. I think that um, um, the civilization, people start uh, to pay attention to themselves deep inside. And a lot of people were coming to philosophical point of view. They, they were coming to all of this uh, esoteric point of view. Not, a, not everybody, but they start more to be interested about how to prove the soul, how to make connection between mind and heart, how to make meditation, how to uh, consider themselves in this space of the of the of world of the earth and how to organize their own space so i think in this case um, it helps a lot and i hope then these things will be making us more better people this is very important i think yeah, it's a very interesting point, Orca. I think by saying that uh, the definition of meditation, we have an expert here, Eva from Greece. Yeah, I know that you have done meditation a lot and you've been analyzing very deeply in this regard. How's your opinion about uh, the changes in the meditation world, I would say? Uh, what Olga said is uh, really, really very correct. We see it around us right now that people are starting to think a lot, not only about their uh, um, body health, but also their mind. And this is very interesting to see happening. So it's one of the, let's say, positive changes that uh, this situation can bring. And uh, we can see that uh, people can find courses online, for example, uh, various big universities, very important places. Uh, uh, they organize uh, specifically for this period free online uh, meditation programs, courses. Uh, people can do uh, many things about these subjects right now and it's, uh, it's really becoming bigger and bigger. Uh, this is very interesting because I think in this way we learn how to um, act and react with things that we cannot actually control, what, uh, what it means. Um, we cannot control everything about coronavirus right now. We cannot, uh, uh, that's why we have the fear, that's why we, we feel fear, because we don't know when the vaccine will come, if everything will be okay, uh, how much we must wait. So uh, through these lessons, we, we learn to be more confident. We learn to believe that uh, uh, things will change. This is a bad moment, it's going to change to a better one. Uh, so it's very interesting to find solutions. Also, as Olga said, in philosophy, not only in meditation or uh, um, psychological, uh, other okay. psychological ways that are more connected to experts. But as a person, simple persons, who can read some things more about philosophy, especially not, uh, for us that we live in China, it's very interesting to see uh, some things that uh, uh, local people get help from. For example, uh, some um, exercises they do like Qigong or Tai Chi, which uh, connect both body and mind. Uh, we have things to learn and I think they can become universal. Uh, many exactly. people, uh, many friends uh, from Greece, Italy and other places, they ask me specifically this time, for the first time in, in their life, uh, how I can help them with uh, Tai Chi or uh, Qigong. Oh. Because uh, before they never thought of doing something like that. Instead now they do. Because yeah. they realize how important it is uh, for the body to have a calm mind. And yeah. uh, they try to find all these ways that uh, China has plenty to, to give. And it's exactly. very interesting to see this, uh, this uh, change. Yeah, because I think I, as a Chinese person, I mean, we have a lot of fundamental uh, cultural heritage we would like to share with the world. And I think by, uh, 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 by interpreting more with different parts of the world and different culture, more and more people are getting more adapted to the Chinese culture and they would like to, like three of you, like to uh, dig in to some uh, uh, deeper level of certain aspects, for example, uh, Tai Chi, for example, uh, uh, Kung Fu, for example, uh, um, uh, food Qigong. massage, yeah, Qigong, yeah, this, uh, these items, I mean, this aspect and uh, to really dig in deeply and have their own understanding about it and we can find a way and this is actually the gap between the 
I would say not only the East and the West, but between culture and between nations, uh, we can uh, bridge these gaps with with more mutual understanding and with uh, with more broad thinking uh, mindset. And I think by this topic, I found out that for me, it's like also not only uh, making some meditation, but to maintain a very uh, good, I would say, mental situation at work has been not that easy because you know what? Having a dedicated workplace to keep the pretty much my regular work hours has been very important. But in this pandemic, it has been really disturbed me a lot because I've been like every one of you, be forced to work at home, be forced not come to the office. So I have to really figure out uh, how to uh, maximize the use of my time at work when I'm at home or when I'm in the office because it's a totally different thing. And luckily, I don't have kids, but for people who have kids, they might have some other issues because they need babysitting, they need parenting their kids. Or if people have you know, pets, they have to walk their dogs every now and then. So um, you know, there, will, uh, there will be a very limitation of the speed of the internet in people's home. And there's a, a, actually a lot of issues in terms of working at home. So I wanna ask three of you, have you ever been experiencing some of the difficulties or I'll say obstacles in terms of work differently in different places or dimensions? And any suggestions for people around the world, our viewers, uh, who are about to experience or already experienced in this situation? What, what's your suggestion about that? I could say something about it. Sure. Uh, I would say that it's uh, very important this period of time that is not so uh, clear and uh, it's very stressful uh, to have uh, a program to follow a schedule that uh, we decide and we feel comfortable with and uh, we keep uh, an order in our life. What does mm -hmm. it mean? Um, even though we don't, some of us, many of us don't have to go to, uh, to school or to work, uh, it's good to wake up in, uh, in the morning uh, as early as possible, follow a program, dress up even if we have to stay at home, not stay with the pyjamas, um, make up maybe, uh, dress up well, uh, organize uh, cooking, uh, eat well, exercise outside if it is possible, near nature would be perfect, but in case people are in quarantine, uh, they can do also exercise at home, uh, organize this, uh, their work schedule if they have or they, their study schedule according to specific times of the day. Keep some time always to meditate or to calm down, listen to music, for example, which is very, uh, it's a very good anti-stress. Uh, pick up uh, uh, another hobby, maybe a new one like painting, uh, and always try to have a good sleep, which means that don't stay till late with playing games online or watching films forever. Uh, try to, to do something that brings you energy, not takes it away. What brings you energy is things that uh, is something that can inspire you. For example, follow a course that uh, you never thought you would have done because you didn't have the time or it was very expensive. Currently, many, many courses online are free. Uh, you can um, do something like that, uh, follow courses or uh, for, uh, learn a new instrument. It's actually possible to learn instruments online. Uh, do things that uh, bring energy in your life. This is very, very important in order to stay um, safe at home and sane. Exactly, exactly, because actually I mean, according to what Eva said, I have to really summarize, be grace. If you're graceful enough to yourself, you're graceful enough to the people and the things you are working towards with. Yeah, so be grace. Yeah. Ada, you have something to say in this regard? How did you work at home? How did you manage about uh, balancing your life uh, in terms of the home office, I would say, telecommunicating with your colleagues and the partners? <laughs> You know, I can say that during my lifetime uh, and working life, the best times was this quarantine times <laughs> because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, working from home is very good. <laughs> 
because I mean, yes, uh, <laughs> yes. Sometimes you, you don't feel. Some people you may not feel good. So like every day you just wear pajamas and you just stay at home. Like Eva said, if you don't like it, you can wear like dress up like uh, the same before. But for me, you know, wearing pajamas and working at home, it was very good. <laughs> But uh, you know. <laughs> You know, I mean, uh, for some people, it may be a problem. For example, for example, I had a friend during this quarantine time. My, I had a roommate, and uh, she was giving online classes. And oh my God, uh, it it was a problematic thing because this connect there was connection problem. So the students uh, were getting affected by this, and also my friend uh, was getting affected. So, but these kind of problems, some problems we cannot solve just by ourselves like internet or some uh, apps you know we use like zoom and other things so uh, but this also can create uh, some space for you to you know to be lazy and to <laughs> not work <laughs> maybe you will have extra time for yourself i don't know people have different situation but yeah that's that's what i think we have in general more flexibility uh, abilities to arrange things on our own <laughs> yes 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 that's good exactly yeah indeed indeed yeah so uh, yeah let's take a look on our backstage we've been uh, receiving a few questions i would like to uh, uh, bring one question uh, our question is from mr kumar the ashtaba he's from uh, amdabad india uh, it's my indian friend <laughs> so wow. despite of the uh, very fierce uh, uh, bilateral relationship between china and india i'm still uh, in admiration of most of the indian people and i'm a big fan of the indian culture so i'll say still, me too yeah, kumar you're very welcomed yeah and kumar has a question yes my birthday is next week It seems like I will never have my birthday party this year. So, uh, insiders, what's your opinion on uh, how <laughs> I'm missing some of the great events? Yeah, in uh, in your lifetime, I think we've talked about these topics uh, before our discussion. Actually, because I think you know, for us, you know, uh, I've been, I've not been experiencing this kind of the issue, but some of my friends they even. Uh, lost their family members, or their uh, siblings are getting married, or their best friend is getting uh, 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 like a birthday party, stuff like that. So, I, I mean, ceremony is kind of uh, symbolic and very important in our life, and also, uh, especially in terms of this milestone uh, era of the one person's lifetime, it's been very how to say unfair, or I would say disappointed. Or I would say some people are really uh, fed up about not having a chance to attend a person's, uh, let's say, funeral, wedding, or I would say birthday party. Anyway, so what is your opinion, insiders, about Kumar's question? He will miss his birthday party, and he's getting really, really sad. <laughs> I would like to say that Kumar must be not missing his uh, birthday party. Uh, he can organize a very nice event with his friends, make it uh, appointment. I don't know what what time he he is loving to do this at the evening during the day. Cook by themselves, making them in advance uh, some um, suggestion what they might be doing, <laughs> and they can make a meeting online. So uh, at least this will be making him. Um, feeling that he is still with his friends, he can see them. Of course, he cannot embrace them. He cannot feel them like completely. But in the same time, they can have uh, tea or something, food together in front of computers. <laughs> But they can they can at least communicate, and and he will be uh, having his good words, uh, saying to him happy birthday wishes, and they can discuss, they can share something at least for one hour, or for two hours, however and how long they wanted to do this. Whenever they like, yeah. Yes, and whatever they Umar, like. Umar, if you're listening now uh, to our live stream, you're well, very welcome to join our live. Uh, next week, we can spend five minutes to say some happy birthdays in yes. our language with you. And uh, I'm a big fan of masala di uh, dishes, of the Indian dishes. Yeah, I, 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 I can make my own version of masala, and, and we can share some recipes online. How about that, Kumar? 
Yeah, yes, I, it would be I, I hope you can bring some fun and joy to your birthday party next week. I mean, yeah, if you're listening, you're more than welcome to join. <laughs> yes, and you know, we even, food. yes, and we even we can make a dance together because, like, <laughs> in front of the computer, you are free, play music, and you can dance, and your friends will be supporting you. Yeah. Important is the company. We can uh, you can have company online too. It's possible. Yeah, yeah. my friend. Said. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So as we said, Kumar, you're warmly welcome. <laughs> so this is the uh, uh, this is the uh, one question from Kumar. We have another question from uh, Vittorio uh, Di Glandiano. He's from uh, Napoli, Italy, Napolitano style. <laughs> so he has a question. Uh, he has not been working. Uh, okay, the question goes like this. I have not been working since January. Wow, it's been, let's say, seven months. <laughs> so I lost my uh, uh, pace of uh, working in the office. So I really would like to find a balance to come back to the normal situation in my life. Any suggestions in uh, uh, balancing the big long holiday ever in my lifetime and getting back to the normalcies insiders <laughs> somebody can answer vittorio's question i can also answer <laughs> oh, i can on. start i can yeah, I start i think that first uh, what the um, vittorio right yes uh, he might be doing that uh, it's to make um, how to say to sign the, a, a diary probably uh, or to, to, to sign a, a plan and to, to understand what was good, what, is, what was bad during this time and during his work. And also to make a schedule for himself to understand um, where he is losing time and how he can uh, make in a time, how he can balance the time. And another one thing what I can uh, also suggest, it's probably to develop himself also and to search for some information uh, in terms of his profession, uh, what uh, can open him more wider door uh, to join uh, again work and office and uh, his profession or some profession next uh, to his what he had before, probably uh, like this. Very interesting, yes. Olga. Uh, somebody want to say something? Add it up to Vittorio's question. Eva, please. I think uh, all this time uh, that he passed um, out of job gave him the opportunity to think uh, what he likes and what he doesn't and what other opportunities he could have, how he can improve himself in, uh, in this profession that he has right now, but also what else he can do. Uh, this is a great opportunity to find also a second job or another um, occupation, create another occupation, because uh, all this time we could have and we still have the opportunity to um, uh, create something, as we said, many, many psychologists went online. I don't know exactly what uh, Vittorio's job is. Che lavoro fai? What kind of job he does? Uh, he could maybe uh, change it radically in some way. <laughs> Go ahead, Vittorio. Make a, a sig significant change. Be creative. Change in your lifetime. Be creative. Do something. And be grace. <laughs> so, okay, I'll select the very last question from our viewers. It's from Jessica uh, Plosha uh, from New Zealand. Wow, it's our first New Zealand uh, viewer. And uh, her question is very simple. Insomnia, insomnia, insomnia. I cannot fall asleep for days, weeks, and months. Uh, any suggestion on helping me to get through of these insomnia problems? Well, it seems like uh, getting... Be able to get to fall asleep is been a worldwide issue, right? <laughs> yeah, yes, I think true. I can say something, some uh, thing about this. Uh, first of all, this insomnia people suffer. A lot of people suffer from this, uh, and I suffered before too. Uh, you know, uh, it's very important before you sleep. You have to take care of some stuff like uh, one hour before you sleep don't use any uh, phones or computers or anything because it affects your eyes and also uh, don't smoke or don't take alcohol i mean these kind of things or don't eat 
you know, before you sleep, at least, I mean, four hours, don't eat anything because uh, it affects your body. Your, uh, your digestion system is working and it affects your sleep. And by the way, these things, uh, these uh, tips are, I mean, I searched about it. Uh, I also listened to some experts. So that's why I also make a plan like for myself. So uh, these kind of tips are not, I mean, not empty ones. Uh, so uh, in a scientific way. And also, uh, you know, when you go to sleep, before going to sleep, you can do some kind of meditation uh, to just get rid of all the things you are thinking. You may have some problems in your life. You have some stress. Uh, especially during this quarantine time, uh, definitely you are affected from the uh, from this situation. But try to get rid of these thoughts. Just just focus on sleeping. You know, uh, to be able to focus is the most important thing. Just think about sleeping, nothing else. So we have to get it uh, to count the ships because I count my <laughs> ships. And it sometimes works, yeah, but you know, it's very interesting. I want to just share a joke. In China, ship doesn't equal to sleep. We have another word. So what? you have to you have to be very creative because shui jiao has nothing to do, you know, shui jiao, which means uh, sleep, has nothing to do with yang, which means ship. There are totally very different things in terms of pron pronunciation. So Jessica, I would like to say, I mean, you're a native English speaker, be, pr uh, be creative. Think about ship, think about something else uh, related uh, with uh, sleep, this world, and make some, you know, improvisation on that. That can be very helpful for you. <laughs> That's my suggestion. <laughs> I also wanted to add something uh, because Jessica is from New Zealand and New Zealand, we know that it's um, a place where kiwi is growing. So I've oh, heard yeah. the... Yes, and I've heard uh, from uh, doctors one advice that you have to eat kiwi, like not not uh, not exactly before you are sleeping, but uh, some hours before you are sleeping, because kiwi is having some element which is makes your body relax and to be prepared for sleep. So Jessica, wow. go ahead and please kiwi two kiwi before to sleep. You can eat and try to to manage with this. And another one uh, thing about insomnia, I would uh, also recommend aromatherapy uh, and to use some uh, oil uh, around of your face so where you can smell it. Um, this I was trying also, lavender, first of all, yes. Lavender and something uh, else which is making you calm. But lavender is number one for sure. And uh, another one thing, it's, to calculate breathing. Uh, you don't need to uh, calculate uh, ships or to see something and to calculate them, but you can calculate your breathing and uh, inhale and exhale. So uh, some certain time inhale, some certain time uh, exhale. So, and it will be also relax a little bit your body and then uh, you will be also slowly fell and sleep, fell and sleep. The time is exactly like you inhale three seconds and you exhale seven seconds as I heard. I mean, I mean three and seven, uh, the best yeah, it's, way. Yeah, it could be different. It could be different. Yeah. How it's this comfortable. golden division, three and seven, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So besides counting ships and eating kiwis, you have something else to do, Jessica. I hope we can help you at our best to make you fall asleep. So in the end of our episode uh, uh, of this edition of China Insiders on Life, where everybody is dealing with times of the moral distress, where our healthcare providers have to work in institu uh, institutions, that actually those institutions are under-resourced and this actually creates a lot of the moral distress or I'll say the mental disabilities for every human being of being put in the situations to violate our integrity which is, uh, with, with each other. And actually our belief systems. So this is the remarkable moment. We can just need to do our best and we can seek for what we think can be most helpful to what is the mental health we need to seek for in the long run and to really calm down ourselves and to relax at the moment when we fall asleep, focus on every single night of our lives. And we cannot say that, no, we're going to be living with anxiety for the near future. So 
we're kind of giving up. No, this is not a solution. The solution is like we have to develop a new strategy, which I will believe is the emotional resilience of our human being to 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 develop some really solutions and functions and uh, and strategies towards stress, towards anxiety, and towards depression. And this is for all of us to know that how to shape our day every single day of our life, so that we have a feeling that the stress are not chronic or it's like unrelenting or unstopping. Because in reality, nothing is monolithic, and we all have the different states. During the day, and we all need to cautiously and effectively and effortlessly regulate our states. So I think we can have a very good solution in terms of balancing what we actually heard and received all the insights from our therapeutic providers, from our China insiders, and from your personal psychologists. So in the end of this edition of the、uh, episode two, China Insiders on on Live program, we would like to. Summarize all our three insiders. Everybody, please provide three tips from each one of you to our viewers how to cope with this pandemic situation mentally and psychologically. Please, everybody, give me three tips. Let's go from、uh, Eva. Eva, take it away, please. Oh,、uh, be creative. Find ways to adjust. And think uh, uh, in an optimistic way for the future. Great, great insight. Thank you so much, Ada. Ada, please.、Uh, first of all, try to keep your routine、uh, and try to have good sleep, and also、uh, don't read too much news. <laughs> and also,、uh, I think this is the most important thing. <laughs> like Eva said, stay positive, and you know. Well, there's a famous saying: "What doesn't kill you makes you stronger." So, you you have to find a way to adapt. Definitely, you have to find a way. Orga, there you go. Yes, I would like to say to you:、uh, first of all,、uh, try to、uh, make a diary because it's helping to you to express yourself and to understand yourself better. Then make、uh, your everyday rituals come true. So basically, wake up, making exercises,、uh, brushing your teeth, cooking something, and so on. And another one: look around. Uh, if you cannot control the situation, I mean, with yourself sometimes, but you need to control it.、Uh, you can have a look and to understand. Probably, you can help someone else, and how you can help someone else to see, like to to switch your focus、uh, a little bit around. And another one to enjoy your now moment, moment、uh, like nowadays in this moment, and see around the world and understand back. Come back to understand that the world is beautiful, the world is wonderful, and、uh, we are continue living our life, and we can make it better and better. Definitely, thank you so much, Orga. I think I will give everybody also three words from my own experience, and I think adapt, resilient, and conquer. So in the end, we'll conquer this virus, and we will、uh, get back to normal.、Uh, By our own wishes and by our own solutions and by our joint efforts. So this is the end of the episode two of the China Insiders Are Live program.、Uh, we will uh, uh, see everybody next week, maybe on Saturday, maybe on Sunday. But we will give updates on our I'm in China official web page and the Facebook page. So uh, uh, stay tuned. So we will update you about our. A detailed time of our next live session, and we're looking forward to see everybody very soon. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.